involved in security. Are we all involved in security? Sweet. You can just nod your head if your uh, hand is too heavy, too. That works. So uh, I actually hope that you guys will have something to take away. I've got high hopes for that. Um, basically, uh, I hope that you'll uh, be more familiar with issues that arise with the current industry thought and a lot of the uh, maxims that the industry has. <clears throat> also, maybe have an idea about next year's best practice auditing methodology as far as code is concerned. And last but not least, this is actually my favorite part. I hope uh, you guys will find some of the bugs that I'm sharing kind of neat and interesting. So uh, I, I decided that uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about industry maxims um, because I find that they do generate a lot of the vulnerabilities that we're all dealing with today. Um, I only really have one though, so the plural is kind of a lie. Um, basically, I, I stole this from Princeton, and a maxim is a saying that is widely accepted on its own merits. Basically something that's not deeply investigated, something people just say, yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, who's heard about this one? Who's heard this one uh, abused, misused, and who understands it? <laughs> if anybody understands it, I'd be surprised because I don't understand it. So uh, Symantec has a nice definition. 80% uh, of the security risk is managed by uh, fixing 20, by uh, implementing the most important 20% of the available controls, right? Uh, uh, just take that for granted, I guess. Um, Microsoft uh, claimed that they actually invented the 80-20 rule, which is kind of interesting because I think it was uh, related to Pareto, who was an Italian mathematician, I believe. So uh, it's kind of cool that they were able to claim that. But uh, basically what they said is 80% of an organization's real information security comes from only 20% of the assets and effort put into the program. Does anybody understand what that means? I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, it sounds really mathematical, though, and there's a percent sign, so I tend to believe it. Um, SANS actually uh, decided to uh, uh, basically say a little bit about the fact that it seems a little shaky, right? They said it may seem like voodoo, and I agree with that. I know what that means. Um, and they actually had a little bit of a, of a graph here showing that they were able to select categories where they were able to get the percentage to meet the Pareto principle, showing that indeed uh, with the selected numbers uh, the Pareto principle applies which is actually sort of wonderful. So uh, it was invented by this Italian dude. And basically, uh, he observed originally that 20% of the population of Italy owned 80% of the land. And he thought that was interesting because uh, it also um, met, uh, it was also a lot like his pea pods because he found out that 20% of the pea pods in his garden accounted for 80% of the peas. So we're using that in information security right now, and I think that's kind of uh, not such a good thing. Uh, here we go. One of the issues I have are populations are countable, and so is property. But uh, who knows how many vulnerabilities they have in, uh, in their current environment? The exact number. Who could even look that up? Right? That's going to be kind of difficult. So also, uh, the quantity of land is unchanging. But as we all know, the vulnerability landscape changes daily. New vulnerabilities get released. Uh, systems undergo configuration changes. Basically, property doesn't change. So uh, I think that it applied more to pea pods than it is uh, than computer security. Um, the other issue I have is uh, there's a financial motivation regarding hacking right now. Everybody's familiar with all of the issues and the money that's leaving the banks. Um, and basically, uh, what you have is instead of a naturally occurring phenomenon, you have people who are looking at these vulnerabilities. And those people are uh, actually feeding their kids off these vulnerabilities. And uh, I don't remember where this is from. 
But uh, it was some movie, Never Doubt How Clever Someone Can Be When uh, They Need to Feed Their Kids. So basically, the 20% of vulnerabilities will change as people start to fix those 20%. And it's, uh, it's really just a moving target. So uh, I decided to share these for a little bit of humor. It's uh, right after lunch, and I needed you guys to be awake a little bit. Um, I've also get, gave the attributions a little bit of an anonymity. But uh, I actually heard this, and uh, I, I don't want to do personal business with this company ever. Um, it's just a complete misapplication. People are taking these numbers and just doing whatever they want with it. Who, who believes this lady? <laughs> I don't believe her either. So uh, this was my other favorite. Um, basically, he said 80% uh, of all breaches are caused by 20% of vulnerabilities. But those are breaches that he knew about. I mean, having statistics regarding actual breaches and security is kind of a soft science, and we shouldn't really use those numbers because if a true attacker were to breach the security, I'm sure that uh, it would be a lot harder to detect. So I've got some truthiness. These are things that I believe, right? 100% of the security vulnerabilities are caused by an incomplete understanding of the system. Uh, I wasn't meant to do that. There we go. But you got to remember that 82% of all statistics are made up. <laughs> so uh, now I'm going to get into a little bit about audit methodologies, but I'm going to kind of breeze past this a little bit. If you guys need me to slow down a little bit, just start nodding or shaking your heads, and uh, I'll be able to tell the difference between the stone-cold silence in the room right now. So basically, when you're doing security audits, um, the, the main difference between the, two, between the different types of audits you can have are automated audits versus manual. And basically, it's a computer looking at a computer program, or it's a person actually investigating the different lines of code inside the program. Super simple. Um, also, uh, it's dynamic versus static. Uh, that's a live shark, in case you guys can't see that quite right and a dead shark, or at least I assume he's dead. But uh, basically, it's the difference between is the program running or are we inspecting the program without the program running? Are we looking at just the dry lines of code? And that sort of uh, branches out into these various categories. Um, basically, you have uh, different combinations of automated or manual and static versus dynamic. Uh, and those uh, basic categories branch out into the standard practices that we all have. Who's familiar with uh, these types of security audits for code? Who's used at least one of these? OK, I'm going to say that's 87% of the population in this presentation. So uh, let's talk a little bit about non-standard practices. Who's uh, familiar with binary audits, has binary audits conducted on their software, or has done them before? I, I think that's like 1.2%. So there are some advantages to binary audits. It's a unique vantage point. When you're able to look at the uh, sort of the lay of the land from a vantage point that the people who are securing the code don't actually have or don't conduct on a daily basis, you're able to find a lot of vulnerabilities that uh, wouldn't be discovered through the other methods. Um, for instance, Microsoft um, implements all of those categories we showed before. However, uh, who here thinks they're running Microsoft securely? Zero percent. So basically, we talked to Microsoft, and uh, I talked to Mike Reevy and asked him, you know, do you guys do binary code audits? Do you look at your code in the binary? And he sort of laughed at me and said, why would we do that? We have the source code. And that's fair, right? But by looking at the source code, there's certain things, or by looking at the binary, there's certain things in the source code that uh, basically are easy to miss. Uh, these are some of the categories I have. And uh, I'll show a little bit about why that's the case. So 
So uh, one of those things was type issues. Basically,